YouTube channel, Forever Shar. And I know, I know, everybody's talking about day 18 passed days ago, what happened? Let me tell you. You know, my channel is all about self-care, self-love, and doing things for you. And one thing that I committed to this year was recording a video every single day. Well, I didn't know how much work that would be. So I took a few days off to get myself organized, get all my videos up on my channel, and get everything set and ready to go so I can become consistent in doing it every day and posting every day. So yes, I'm a little bit behind, but don't worry, I won't waste your time. We'll get started with our favorite part of the day, thriving as an empath. Thriving, lucky for you, we've got four days yeah, four days to catch up on, and I am excited about all four days. So let's just get right into it and start with January 19th. January 19th, I'm gonna put my glasses on, y'all, just so, you could, so I can see, so I can read. I don't know if you guys know this, but I wear glasses, but there makes a weird ring in the camera with my ring light, so. But peep my new glasses. Am I giving you teacher vibes? Am I giving you stylish vibes? Yes, but let's get into it. So, January 19th, no is a complete sentence. Let me say that again. No is a complete sentence. Us empaths struggle with saying no. And a part of the problem isn't because we don't know how to say no. It's that we don't want to come off as rude. But guess what? No means no. And if I think the answer is no, then the answer is no. There's nothing wrong with that. The main thing is approach. It's how you say no. If you are like, no, I don't wanna do that. No, nobody's gonna respond to that well, let's be honest. But if you're just saying, like we've talked about, hey, that doesn't really align with my schedule right now. I really don't have time. I'm so sorry about that. It shows your compassion towards that person and it makes the no not harsh it makes it an easy no but you also don't have to explain yourself if i don't want to do something that is something that i am working on i don't want to do it no period there's nothing more that needs to be said it's just no so our intention says at least once today i will say no with love even if it initially feels uncomfortable i will assure myself that this will become easier with practice. Saying no will get easier, and you don't always have to say no. But if you, let me tell you how it said it in here. It said, if someone has unrealistic expectations of you or ask you to do something you are unable to take on, remember, no is a complete sentence. No, I can't walk your dog for you. No, I can't let you borrow any money. No, I'm not hungry. No is okay, and it is okay to say no. It will be uncomfortable in the beginning, but trust yourself. Which goes into January 20th. Recognizing inauthentic people. Those are people that are not here for the right reasons. One thing I'm working on is realizing who is bringing value to my life and who is bringing it down. And while you recognizing those people, you're aware of their intentions. Now. I really like the way Thriving talked about this because it says in here that even though you are aware that someone's intentions aren't correct, that doesn't mean you have to cut them off. You study them, you learn them, and you figure out why and eventually get to the bottom of it. If people are kind of sketchy and you really don't know their story or what their intentions are, it doesn't mean like, mm, I ain't going to talk to you because I don't know what you're about. Learn them and figure it out because it could be something that we can help them with. The intention says, I will listen to my intuition about people. I will not second guess myself and I will be cautious if someone feels inauthentic and stay observant to discover why. You see, it's all about figuring out why that person is making you feel that way because it could be misunderstanding or it could be going to, into January 21st, befriending your body. A lot of people are uncomfortable with being themselves, being in their body, being in their skin. And I know a lot of people are like, oh my goodness, Char, you're so confident. 
I have not always been this confident. I can say that I've got friends that really helped bring out my personality, bring out my confidence, bring out me embracing tons of things about me. They all help me just draw it out. And those why I, those friends in particular, I keep super close because they're super important because of the things that they've done for me in that type of manner when it's building my self-esteem. Some people are not comfortable in the skin they're in. They don't know how to embrace the inner you. And unfortunately, that is all a part of an impact because a lot of us struggle with that. And a lot of us struggle with wanting to ha help everybody learn them, and love them and feel them, but we don't do that for ourselves. So befriending your body says, I will settle into my body completely by taking a few deep breaths, slow, and I will enjoy my sensuality and notice how good it feels to walk, breathe, eat, and smell the flowers. Embrace and enjoy everything about you because everything about you is beautiful. And the crazy part about it is everything about you is unique. No one can be you better than you. And that's my favorite thing to say. No one can be you better than you. You are the best you out there because no one can be you. And that is my favorite thing. All right, let's get into January 22. Listen to fatigue. This is something that I've had a hard time struggling with because your body is telling you things. Your body gives you intuition. When you yawn, that's because your body needs oxygen. When you're tired, that's because your body needs rest. And in Thriving, it talked about how overachievers are always praised. When you work really, really hard, or you put in all the extra hours, or you do most of the project on your own, people are like, wow, great job, good job, good job. No, that's not okay. You need to be able to rest and care for you and yourself. That is self-care. Taking a step back and saying, huh, if you're exhausted, your eyes start to get itchy and watery, that's because you're tired. You need to sit down if your head hurts and you're sitting in front of the computer all day, your brain hurts, your eyes hurt, you're tired, rest. And, and in the book, it didn't even say, go lay down and go to bed for the night and, and start again tomorrow, it's pointing it out. Take a few minutes to step away and meditate. You know, take a small nap or do something different. One thing that we do, uh, we spend a lot of our time, we work from home, we spend a lot of time at our computer desk. So in the office, we do not eat meals in the office. Because what that does is it gets us out of our working element and into a more relaxed state where we get to enjoy our meal. You normally, you know, we put on something on the TV or watch something on our phone, but we're away from the work. And it that 30, 40 minute break, like I just took one right now. I watched one whole episode of LA's Finest. That's my show. And I came back right into work because it was like, I've got a chance to relax, even though it was just 40 minutes of me just sitting there watching TV, cuddling with my dog. It was nice to feel that relaxation. And that's super important for all of us to do. The intention says, today I will ask myself, am I experience either acute or chronic fatigue? Then I will identify one compassion action I can take to rest and restore my energy. And that could be anything. If you, if you like coffee, you know, when you feel that tiredness, Go to your favorite coffee spot and just grab a drink because you're walking away from whatever it is that is exhausting your energy. And that could go from anything, studying, reading, working, that could be anything. And the last one for today, January 23rd, breathe out stress. That's what I had to do in order to get all my things together and get reorganized and get in the mental state that I need to be to be able to create these videos for you guys. I didn't understand how hard it was gonna be and I was starting to feel overwhelmed, so I needed to take a breath. And it doesn't mean you take a breath and you stop what you're doing, because that's not any way near to be successful. But taking a breath, breathing it out, listing it, writing a list, jotting down notes, figuring out, okay, these are the steps I need to take, that is gonna take out all the overwhelm, all the things that you're going through. Breathing, you inhale all the good, you exhale all the bad. That's literally what breathing is. So if you've got something on your mind, heavy on your heart, you know, you just feel like 
like a soda that's been shaken. You know when you shake a soda and you kind of open the lid a little bit and just sizzles out? That's just breath. That's just breath, y'all. So take your soda, open the lid and just After a while, the fizzing will stop. You'll feel better and you'll be able to enjoy just like you would enjoy a soda. It says, for our intentions, I will practice conscious breathing. If I notice I'm constricting my breath, I will begin to breathe slowly and naturally again. With each inhale and each exhale, I will feel my life force growing stronger. And that is important. And the reason why is because, you know, I told you guys I'm not good at meditating, but I'm learning, I'm practicing. And that is one of the things that I found in a guided meditation was like, focus on your breathing. Focus on your breathing. So in situations where I start to get bottled up, it, I just start like, just so I can let it out, whatever I've got going on, you know? Everything that we do, every step that we take is just to better ourselves, guys. Everything that we've done thus far, everything that we've talked about is just incredible because we're starting to talk about things that make people uncomfortable, especially as empaths. I've done in the last 23 days so many different habits and things that I'm still perfecting today that are just different, you know, even from you know, switching from working in an office every day to working from home and, and trying to stay consistent and going to the gym and eating right and getting my videos edited and taking responsibilities and still enjoy myself. All those things are just a learning, learning process that we're all learning and we're all getting better. We're all growing and we're all being the best us possible. And I'm so proud of everyone who has stuck on this journey with me, who shouted me out, who has shared, who have subscribed. You know, if you're new to the channel, I'm so glad to have you guys all here and I'm ready and I'm so excited for so much more to come. Tomorrow is Sunday, you know I start my Sunday routines. So things are gonna be a little bit different in the videos coming this far because like you guys know, I am learning. And if you guys have any suggestions or anything that you would do to make my content better or things that you guys wanna talk about, comment below so I can start talking about things um, other than just thriving. I'm, I'm so down to talk about self-care habits. I'm down to talk about things that you guys do in your regular routine, spiritual, religious. Let's talk. Like, this is an open communication for everyone. It's a safe place for everyone. So like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that you gotta do, and I will see you guys next video. I love you all. Thanks for coming. Forever Shy.